Let's talk about the unit of deployment in Kubernetes that is pods. Why do you need those and how does it work? We're going to begin with an application that you run with a Docker container typically. So you take the source code and you write a Docker file, you convert it into an image. Once you have an image with Docker, you typically run it as a container. That's how you deploy it with Docker. And uh, that container contains, so typically there is a one as to one mapping between a application, image, and container. So one application, one image, and one container. Now, when you deploy this container in Kubernetes, do, uh, do you, you know, run it as container? Let's find out. When you deploy it in Kubernetes, you actually take that container and then package it in another vehicle. I call it as a vehicle that you use to deploy things in Kubernetes. And this vehicle, this wrapper is called as a pod. Pod is the unit of deployment in Kubernetes. So when you want to run an application in Kubernetes, you typically write a YAML file, you define the spec for the pod and you run a command such as kubectl apply. When you run that command, what actually happens is this pod is what gets deployed in this environment and you can create multiple replicas of it. And that is a unit of deployment. So pod is a way to wrap your containers, one or more containers together and to run your application with it. So when you want to scale, you want to create replica, that is the replicas of the pod. Now, why do you need this concept of pod? Let's look at that. To understand and to explain this concept of pods and why to use pods and not run containers directly, I'm going to take an example. Let's say I want to run this Mongo application, a Mongo database, there's no SQL database. And that's my main application that I want to run in my container. And then I have a monitoring system called as Prometheus. Now I want to collect the metrics from Mongo and send it to Prometheus. And for that, there is a process or a service that I have to run called as Mongo exporter. Now my main application is MongoDB. My auxiliary service is this Mongo exporter. That's the one which is going to collect the metrics from Mongo. It knows which metrics, which performance uh, data to collect, and then it is going to forward it to the Prometheus server. So it has a very simple job, collect the metrics, send it to Prometheus, that's it. Now, whenever I run Mongo and wherever I run it, I need to run this Mongo exporter. How do you run these two containers, two processes together is what we are going to look at. And uh, I'm going to explain two different approaches to it. Okay, let's now look at the first approach. One way to achieve this would be to take the Mongo application, MongoDB application, also the Mongo exporter and package it in one image. So two processes installed as part of that image. And uh, so it's a combined image. And if we use this image, which has these two processes, M for MongoDB, E for the exporter. And then you launch one container with this. Now typically we run one application and a command with that container so that is going to be MongoDB. Uh, you could possibly run an additional command as well. There are ways and methods not ideal but there are ways to do this as well. Now what happens here let's have a look right so because docker daemon is going to attach to this application called as Mongo and that's the one it is going to monitor. That's the one it is going to uh, check for it, that's the one it is going to attach to, check for the availability and also use it to collect the logs possibly and then forward it, uh, store it locally or forward it to an external system. So Docker daemon only bothers about this MongoDB as the service. That's the only thing that it bothers about. Now, what happens to the exporter? Exporter is sort of ignored because Docker daemon is not watching for it. It can only watch one process. Exporter is ignored. Uh, it doesn't, if it crashes, it doesn't bother about it. It doesn't bother to collect the logs from the exporter either. So as far as Docker daemon is concerned, it is only bothering about the one service that is MongoDB here. That is a problem. That's not an ideal way of running it. And uh, the other problem is also with the image because you're combining two applications in one image. So whenever you are deploying Mongo, you are 
you know essentially adding the exporter as well sometimes you may not even need it but you always package it and any changes that you want to make to any of these application you'll have to rebuild the entire image again and deploy it for mongo and exporter both right uh, those could be the problems here and definitely from the runtime point of view docker is meant to be uh, you know or mean to run only one application at a time so it should be used to run typically uh, one application and that's why we have the mapping of uh, for one application you create one image and you run it uh, with one service only let's now look at the second approach we will also call it as a borg approach because it came from the google's borg cluster manager and uh, google has solved these problems for us and it has done it in a nice way so let's look at how this approach looks like in this approach for two different applications you would create two different images so that's definitely a cleaner approach because whenever you want to change one of the application you have to bother about just an image for that and uh, it does not have the redundant file so when you want to run mongo you can run mongo whenever you want to run mongo and exporter we'll look at how that could be possible let's say we built two different images here now how do we launch it with docker it would have been two different containers right so for every image you want to launch you typically launch a separate container for it i show uh, those containers for two different sizes because mongo is my main application exporter is an auxiliary one now this is clean because then docker is now attached to both the process these are separate containers so docker manages both processes docker collects the logs and separately stores it and you know monitors for it and so on so this is a cleaner approach now the next question and the challenge here is how do we ensure when because we want to run them on the same nodes uh, the exporter has to run on the same node that the mongo runs on how do we ensure that let's find out and that's where could our challenge could be because what could happen is since there are two different containers if you run them as containers they can run on two different hosts we don't get a guarantee of running it on the same host and that's what we actually need here because whenever or wherever mongo is we want to run the exporter on the same host and if you want to run another replica of mongo another exporter has to run along with it on the same host as the mongo now how do we ensure them to run together is where pod makes sense because pod is the way to collectively deploy it let's think of pod as a vehicle to deploy these containers that is what would make us help uh, help us understand and make it easier for us so let's say this is my pod this truck is my vehicle and that's my pod and we load all the application which need to be run together on that one truck uh, so application along with any other auxiliary services typically called as sidecars and we take that vehicle and deploy it because since we have wrapped it up in a vehicle now it guarantees us it travels together wherever it goes and whenever you run another replica you just create a replica of that vehicle and this vehicle is your pod and even if when you deploy a new version of your pod uh, let's say one gets deleted another replica of that pod is created and uh, it again whenever it runs a new version it uh, guarantees that the mongo along with the exporter is run together and that's the concept of pods the second approach is cleaner and this is the way that google showed us all about how you can club containers together when you have a main service and some auxiliary services and run them together as a pod and the same vehicle can also be used to deploy just one container so what you deploy in kubernetes is not a container but a pod that's the unit of deployment so even if it is one container or many for one particular application you wrap it up in a pod and run it so when you talk about a pod we typically use it i've mentioned to the, to you that you typically have one service and an auxiliary service the auxiliary service is typically called as a sidecar and it's not just two containers but it could be more than two as well you might run three or more containers as well now in this case it makes sense to use this collection called as pod or a wrapper called as pod 
but you may have a question that you know let's say i have one container to run so why do you need pod in that case can i not run it outside of pod just take this container and uh, run it simply without using this concept of a pod or a wrapper using pod well that's a smart question because even the developers at google when they created this borg system a predecessor to kubernetes thought the same but and this is what they mention in one of the research papers borg also allows top level application containers to run outside alox alox is a way to run pods now this has this is an important part this has been a source of much inconvenience so kubernetes regularizes things and always runs an application container inside a top level pod even if the pod contains a single container and this is why you run even if you have one container you run it in the same pod so make it simple to make the same process you uh, you know um same for uh, no matter how many containers you want to run uh, you always wrap it up in a pod that simplifies this process and then it makes it same for no uh, you know no matter what kind of application you have you run it the same way in kubernetes and this is where google's experience at running things at google scale and doing it for a while helps helps kubernetes a lot because you know google has already detected and solved most of the problems that would you know that we may encounter and especially we may encounter at scale